Thanks, everybody. Down here, up there, welcome to The Late Show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks... I don't, I don't pretend to be news. This is a late-night show, okay? And I try not to get swept up in the sensationalism of the modern news grind, but when history's being made, I can't ignore it. Which is why tonight's top story is an Ontario man's eight-foot zucchini <laughs> might be the longest in the world. Which, of course, raises the question, is that a world record in your garden, or are you just happy zucchini? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. For more, much more on this story, let's go to CHCH News, Ontario's news leader. While it isn't official yet, a four-year-old man is confident he squashed the record. Adam Atkinson has the incredible story of Henry and the giant zucchini. The Guinness World Record for the longest zucchini is 8 feet 33 inches. Really? <laughs> 8 feet 33 inches. I know this is Canada, but the metric system is weirder than I thought. <laughs> pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, we can check on this, I'm pretty sure he meant 8 feet 3.3 inches. And one other thing, can we see that last angle on the zucchini again? <laughs> Hey! Hey, buddy! Watch where you're dangling your squash. No full frontal crudite, buddy. There could be baby carrots watching. Now, according, according to official measurements, it's 8 feet 4.79 inches. Lord, that's a lot of gourd. A zucchini that long must have as much as zero flavor. Let's go back to intrepid garden newsman Adam Atkinson for more. It's hard to get a sense of just how long this zucchini is, so I'm gonna try to show you a different way. I'm six foot one. This zucchini is almost eight foot five. I... <laughs> I went to journalism school. I wanted to be a foreign correspondent. Now, I'm lying on the ground next to a very long squash. Please dig a hole and just roll me into it. <laughs> Back to you, Taz. <laughs> now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Stephen, there's no way you're gonna play a third clip from this Canadian local news story. <laughs> really? Watch me. <laughs> Jim. D'Angelo is still waiting to hear back from the folks at Guinness World Records, but after he's crowned the Zucchini King, he may tackle some other giant veggies. Uh, maybe I'll look into something else to see what else I can grow that's uh, sort of unique or exotic. Tread carefully, Canada. <laughs> Your gardeners are so preoccupied with whether they could grow giant vegetables, they didn't think if they should. <laughs> There's only one place this leads. Welcome <laughs> to Zucchini Park. Moving, how many minutes on the zucchini did we just do? <laughs> Moving from Canada's national pastime to America's, hoping Donald Trump goes to jail. He... <laughs> ba -da 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 -da, ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> he is presently running for president and from the law, and I'll tell you all about it in tonight's edition of... Sides and or convict. Uh-oh. Now, in Trump's New York financial fraud trial, which is going on presently, the court is hearing testimony from Ivanka, Don Jr., and Eric. Or as Trump calls them, the pretty one, the smart one, my favorite, Don Jr., and Eric. <laughs> First up, uh, Don Jr. When prosecutors asked Don Jr. if he had anything to do with the Trump Organization's fraudulent 2017 financial statements, he replied, I did not. The accountants worked on it, and I leave it to my CPAs. Your Honor, I know nothing about finance or numbers. I achieved my position in the organization because I can make a calculator spell boobs. 
You just turn it upside down. <laughs> well, not to brag or anything, but I have an accountant. And I know they don't just pull the fake numbers out of their CPA holes. <laughs> and, and Junior, Junior Trump knows this too. He even testified about it, describing the letter he signed to an accounting firm asserting the Trump financial docs were accurate as a, quote, cover your butt letter. Oh, I think the Trump organization needs more than a letter to cover that butt. <laughs> Besides... <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much. Besides, the letter says that you gave the accountants the accurate numbers to work with. It's a cover their butt letter, Junior. Your lily white ass is still hanging in the wind, clapping like a harp seal. <laughs> of course, because, because this was in court, there was a sketch of him. Look at that. <laughs> Art critics have dubbed it the Brona Lisa. <laughs> Junior was very interested in his own face because when leaving the court, he paused to hover over the sketch artist's work. <laughs> which explains the second drawing she made. Gah! <laughs> Today, he even had some notes for her telling the artist to make me look sexy and quip that both sides of his face are the good one. It takes a lot of balls to hit on a sketch artist during your own trial. Hey, hey, what are you doing later? I'm free after five. Maybe four with good behavior. <laughs> now... Then Eric Trump took the stand and also claimed ignorance. He had to. He was under oath. <laughs> Trump. Trump. Trump is also facing a constitutional lawsuit. This one's, there's one in Minnesota. This one's in Colorado, right? It, where voters have brought a case to remove Trump from the 2024 ballot under the 14th Amendment, which was passed after the Civil War. To, to bar anyone from serving an office who has engaged in insurrection. Well, Trump's lawyers unveiled a very interesting defense. When it came to the insurrection, the former president did not engage. The term engage, the term engage means to do something. Frankly, no one really knows what that means, but I think we can all agree it means to do something. Now, it sounds like crazy logic, but that's actually how Trump proposed to Melania. My dear... <laughs> My dear, we should be engaged. Frankly, nobody knows what engage means. But it means to do something, and I promise I will do a porn star. <laughs> and if you... If you think the word engage is hard for Trump's lawyers to understand, wait till you hear about the word insurrection. There are lots of definitions of what an insurrection is. When there are numerous definitions, that means there's really none. Yes. <laughs> Your Honor, my client is accused of murder, but murder has so many definitions. Does the prosecution mean a killing or a group of crows? <laughs> I demand mistrial by homonym. <laughs> we got big news about New York congressman and toddler sitting in front of you. <laughs> and toddler sitting in front of you on the plane who won't break eye contact, George Santos. <laughs> Santos is currently the subject of both a criminal probe and a House Ethics Committee investigation, which has motivated his fellow New York Republicans to try to kick him out of Congress. Well, last night, the House held a vote, and Santos survived the effort to expel him. What? You're telling me after all the corruption, the fraud, the money laundering, the identity theft, the fake volleyball, the mystery baby, the fake Hannah Montana, the fake Spider-Man, that Congress decided to not expel George Santos? Well, I have only one thing to say to you. Thank you. <laughs> I need this. He may be a crazy criminal, but compared to all the other criminals, he's fun. <laughs> that being said, boo! You had the chance to vote him out. Yes, thank you. Boo! boo! What a disgrace. Thank you. <laughs> now, after Santos won, he posted a picture of himself wearing a crown alongside the quote, if you come for me, you best not miss. Now, some of you may know he's quoting Omar from The Wire, but I gotta say, in that crown, he doesn't look like a drug lord. He looks like the Burger King. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Secretary Pete Buttigieg 
and Willie Nelson. But when we come back, meanwhile, stick around.